This is a quite interesting plot in cosmochemistry, as from this we can learn quite something about the characteristics of the chemical composition and evolution of the protoplanetary disk. And on the x-axis here is the magnesium silicon ratio, and on the y-axis is the aluminum silicon ratio. Now these three are quite interesting elements, as magnesium and silicon are main elements, and aluminum is a refractory element. And this plot, plot contains a number of various plantar materials. So down here, for example, are the spinel peritides. Each of these gray dots here is one spinel peritide. Then more towards the center here is the composition of the bulk silicate earth. Now the spinel peritides and bulk silicate earth form a correlation, which is often called the terrestrial array. Now assume we have a rock with a bulk silicate earth composition. And this rock then starts to melt um, in this melt fraction crystallization occurs and so on. And this melt will be rich in silicon and aluminum. So we should expect that this melt plots somewhere up here, so in the extension of this terrestrial array. The residual material on the other hand of course will develop towards this direction and is basically the spinel peritides. Now this plot is usually shown in this way. But it would be really interesting whether the extension here of the terrestrial array really arrives at the differentiated material. And therefore I produced a second plot here in which I made this kind of extension. So we just looked at about this area here and then I extended this towards smaller magnesium silicon ratios and higher aluminum um, silicon ratios. And in fact what we can observe that there is this kind of, of direction here towards the differentiated rocks which plot up here. So these are all rocks that I took from the GeoRock database. And then there's some kind of additional fractionations here when aluminum is removed again from the mat. All right, so this is what is quite nice first that we can see in these extensions are in fact the differentiated rocks. So let's go back. Um, so this is it about the the terrestrial rocks within this plot here. Then there are also um, meteorites plotted in, in this diagram here. And these are down here ansatite chondrites, then here are ordinary chondrites, and here are the carbonaceous chondrites. And there's also again this kind of succession here from ansatite ordinary to carbonaceous chondrites. So again, these form some sort of correlation line, and this is called the cosmochemical fractionation trend. And one intriguing bit here is that the cosmochemical fractionation trend and the terrestrial fractionation trend intersect at exactly the bulk silicate earth composition. So one of the first questions here in relation to meteorites and earth is why there is this difference? Because it appears that Earth is the only material that has a higher magnesium silicon ratio than all the other meteorites. Because the Sun and the I chondrites, they plot here, of course, with the carbonaceous chondrites. But Earth is uh, at much higher magnesium silicon ratios, and it's unclear why this is. And one common explanation is that a lot of silicon, substantial amounts, couple of weight percent, maybe up to 7-8 weight percent, silicon resides in the core of the earth. And this would then increase, of course, the magnesium silicon ratio of bulk silicate earth, because the silicon is removed. And this is why basically this entire line is shifted. So the idea is that, um, assuming that the uh, magnesium silicon ratio of earth initially, or that, that all this, that there is this silicon in the core, and this silicon initially was all in a bulk silicate earth. This would move this terrestrial array into this direction, so it could in fact have been somewhere over here initially, going through, for example, carbonaceous chondrites or maybe others, and because silicon was then put into the core, um, this terrestrial array basically was moved to where it is now. None, another, but with respect to magnesium silicon, one thing that is still not resolved is 
why into why there is this um, fractionation in in this direction. So entertite and ordinary chondrites are enriched in silicon, and the reason for this is unclear. And this is not simple to explain because magnesium and silicon are main elements, so changing their concentrations is quite difficult because it requires um, the addition or extraction of substantial amounts of material. One explanation for why inside or ordinary chondrites are enriched in silicon, for example, is that there was phosphoric olivine removed. But this is a difficult explanation because it must have been substantial amounts and we do not find a substantial amount of olivine elsewhere. Because we would expect a reservoir rich in magnesium as phosphoric olivine has a magnesium silicon ratio of 2, so there should be a, a reservoir with substantial um, amounts of magnesium, which is exactly what we don't observe here. That's, um, th that would be Earth, basically, but we don't find it, and for Earth the explanation is more that silicon is in the core. Now one other observation we make here is that the carbonaceous chondrites all have about the same magnesium-silicon mass ratio here. And this is quite a characteristic of the carbonaceous chondrites, that they all have the magnesium, same magnesium-silicon ratio. On the other hand, they have quite a range in the aluminum-silicon ratio. And this is most likely um, due to the addition of calcium-aluminum-rich inclusions, which in fact um, correlates with that CV chondrites have the highest amount of CAIs with about 3, maybe 4 volume percent of CAIs. And um, so these are all the implications, or these are all the things that we can learn from this plot. So we see a correlation in the, in, in the chondrites and know there must have been some additional removal of magnesium and or silicon, which we don't really know yet. There's the shift towards the earth. Um, which is at higher magnesium silicon ratios and which is exactly at the intersection might be explained due to the addition of silicon to the core for example and then of course this also explains why we don't find metrines that um, is the precursor material for earth because if the silicon is in the core then the initial composition was different and then we cannot find material that resembles uh, the earth as it is today. So these are all questions and um, considerations related to this plot, and this is why this kind of plot is one um, among those plots that are really very interesting for cosmochemistry and understanding characteristics and evolution of the protoplanetary disk.